I, I don't really give a f about what Palestine's problems are or Israel's problems are, but if somebody is blocking the road, I do care. <laughs> Epic, bro. <laughs> I don't give two I don't care. I don't care what anyone's doing. I care, all right, if the roads are blocked. Because cars gotta drive in lines and buses gotta bus. Yeah, that's what this comes down to. Time to react to a reaction, then react to that reaction. And then hopefully someone's reacting to me right now, reacting to the reaction to the reaction. You know, it's it's like that Bo Burnham sketch. Here we go. Well, the war in Gaza has incensed communities across the world. Many Jewish people say they don't feel safe on the streets of Western cities. Many Muslims feel the horror facing innocent Palestinians is treated only as a second class concern. That's with any emotive cause. A lot of people would know. God I don't know why Muslims wouldn't think it's not a concern. I feel like that's what happens to Muslims after happened to Muslims after September 11th. I feel like this is just the same shit again. And the same with Asians during COVID. The fight have molded this crisis into a familiar battle of good versus evil, oppressors nope. versus oppressed. Hysterical scenes at some of America's top universities this week have generated more coverage and commentary than the war itself. You already reacted to this. Can't you react to your reaction? That's true. I could just watch myself and then react to my reaction and call myself out, call my own shit. The last two weeks, Columbia says that all in-person classes are now canceled until the end of a semester. Arrests have been made. What? That's insane. For the last two weeks, Columbia says that all in-person classes are now canceled until the end of a semester. Arrests have been made in the wow. Uh, it was funny to see Hassan talk about this afterwards and he revealed that he thought he was considerably more out of control than he actually was. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was keeping it together for the most part because he was kind of just like listening to all that bullshit for so long. And then, yeah, he finally snapped. <laughs> British dude. But I say rightfully so. Yeah, I deserve it. You know, I, I think we should be no longer uh, playing nice with the very concept of people both sides in a genocide, you know, where, where they constantly try to reframe everything like, OK, well, I, I'd like at this moment now everybody to kind of just pause. All right. Stop talking about how there's hundreds of thousands of kids being forcibly starved right now. Uh, can we talk about uh, how bad Hamas is? and how uh, scary they are and uh, basically uh, really explain to the world why Hamas uh, is probably the worst, you know, organization in human history. Yeah, I think that they, they're probably the worst. And so we should probably talk about that and dedicate the next couple of minutes of oxygen to really wasting time on this shit. Well, again, uh, hundreds of thousands of kids are being forcibly starved against their will. And that's, that's I mean, that still hasn't changed. That still happened literally as we're having this conversation about Hamas that's happening in real time right now. But uh, yeah. Cleansing and genocide, which is funny because it's all the exact... Well, they're not accountable, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't voice your opinion. Like, everybody has a right to their opinion. It doesn't mean that they have to do it, but to put yourself out there like that's okay. Act opposite. So I if I may ask you, what about Israel is apartheid? <laughs> you also just said the students in Israel, um, the campus in Israel would not allow Palestinians to join. Mm -hmm. Are you confused or do you know nothing about the country of Israel? Because let me remind you, Jews are not allowed in the West Bank and Gaza. However, Arabs have full Israeli citizenship, have the rights, are members of the Knesset, which is the equivalent of, you can think of Congress, and even prosecuted a former Prime Minister, Ehud Omer, an Arab judge. So what apartheid exactly are you speaking about? What genocide? What ethnic cleansing? Which, and which secondly, you, how you dare in? you, as how dare you say it's okay to talk about an intifada. Let me remind you, the intifada last time it happened in Israel consisted of thousands- I totally forgot about this, how she goes on like six or seven different tangents. You know, it, it's a great, uh, what is it? Uh, Gishgal 
because at the end of the day, what's what's the song supposed to do? It's like, okay, well, I guess I got to go through every one of the internationally recognized organizations that have now at this point accepted and, uh, you know, classify what uh, Israel is doing to Palestinians as, yes, a state of apartheid in which there are separate sets of rights afforded to different citizens and uh, they are not permitted in certain parts of the country based on their ability to produce identification, such as the West Bank, for example, uh, uh, Amnesty International, the United Nations, I mean, a lot of the organizations who dedicate get themselves to oh human rights watch uh, tracking again human rights violations that so yeah i guess we just so you want me to name them all all right so i'll go through them all i'll go through the statutes we'll talk about that and then we'll go how it's actually pretty much internationally recognized uh, as, as a state of apartheid um and uh yeah so uh, oh the next part all right so we got to get into the next part now because you did you did mention lots of things there a lot, a lot of points to have to to refute in real time well, intifada simply just means revolution, and I'm an American. I think that uh, I, I think that Hassan and a lot of the people that are like pro-Palestine is Gish Gal just really throw too many things. Yeah, <laughs> there's someone from a stock photo. Unfortunately for them, that shows up as the photo for it. But it's a rhetorical technique in which a person in a debate attempts to overwhelm their opponent by providing an excessive number of arguments with no regard for the accuracy or strength of those arguments. This one, I would say, is even more important, right? Uh, and then if you just mention as many things as you can in a row, uh, you can then turn to the fact like, well, uh, you know, this Hassan Piker refuses to answer any of the following things that I've actually brought up. And it's like, what did you brought up like 40 minutes ago in amongst like 20 other points, some of which aren't even related to what we're talking about anymore? Stein are doing themselves like a massive disservice by not just immediately condemning things that hurt civilians. Yeah, but okay, I guess Asmund Gold is kind of going to be taking the, the enlightened centrist position in, in all things because it's like, yes, uh, civilians getting hurt bad, right? Um, so while we sit here uh, having the whole enlightened centrist debate it, and everyone gets to be like, well, uh, yeah, I want to first say that October 7th was horrifying. One of the worst things that we've ever witnessed in our lifetime. It's absolutely devastating. And also my heart goes out to the, the people in uh, Gaza. I won't even call them, you know, Palestinians in Palestine, but I will say, oh, oh yeah, all those little babies dying in Gaza. That's sad. It makes me sad. So what's happening right now as, as we speak, as we're sitting here having debates, you know, having, having fun here in the West, what's taking place in the Strip. How are, how is life there? How, how, how are things for kids? How's child welfare? How's nutrition? How's, how's nutrition? How's, how's that? Yeah, what's, what's going on there? While, again, we engage in this whole, like, could we just, can everyone pretty much get on the same page here? Uh, civilians getting hurt? Bad. I mean, if you're not willing to admit that, if you're not willing to say that it's bad, you know, say if Hamas was to kidnap or kill civilians, I mean, can you admit that's bad? Can you admit that's a bad thing? I mean, I, I think it's just like common human decency, really, uh, at this point to, to admit that. I, I feel like it's the same line of rhetoric that you will get from, you know, even people sometimes who are well-to-do progressives or people who want to talk about how they actually care about civil rights and stuff. Yes, I, I do. I deeply care about, uh, you know, uh, the things like you're talking about land back, you're talking about indigenous rights or, or stuff like that, certainly. But can we bring up the fact that, like, uh, there is very high rates of alcoholism in indigenous communities? Can we, can we bring up that? Can we bring up the fact that there is really high rates of having uh, children taken uh, from indigenous families? Now, I'm not going to look into the reason why that happens at much higher rates for indigenous people than, again, non-indigenous people. But I, I, it's concerning, right? And I hear, I hear you. I, I hear what you're saying. Systemic racism is bad institutional racism is bad uh, you know gen genocidal uh, history uh, is, is certainly uh, something to be taken into account but also really high rates of crime really really high rates of crime so uh, i mean what's going on there you know why, why so overrepresented in the criminal justice system in the prison system I mean, you really gotta really gotta ask that it really makes you think doesn't it kind of like what's going on there i mean yeah i mean some of it sure oh, totally i'm i am with you some of it does certainly have to do with uh just repeated patterns of institutional racism that date back to a lot of things that take place in the country like cultural genocide i, I yeah the residential schools were bad good thing we closed them down in 93 bad stuff though but again i'm uh, here to say that uh, yeah i care i think it like massively hurts their platform I, I don't I don't know why that I I don't it, like whenever I think about it like I don't really see how this is beneficial. 
I, 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 I don't like he supports it. Well, the thing is, like, if you support that, then you shouldn't be surprised whenever the other people support the same thing, right? And I, and I think it's actually like it's doing way more harm than good. Because I think that a lot of people, like an average person, just like an average, you know, undecided person, they hear about a lot of bus bombings, and then the other person doesn't immediately say that's really bad. That seems very sus. And I, I think it alienates a lot of, like, middle-of-the-road average people, and I think it even alienates... You know what sucks is that, like, I obviously... You know, if I was to take uh, emotion out of the equation, uh, want to understand what's the best way to convince people who probably uh, are learning about a lot of these topics for the very first time in their lives. And obviously learning the best tools to do that is important. Uh, and then the best way to communicate that is super, super important. Um, but again, I, like uh, it's hard just not to scream and break shit. Um, when you were faced with either people who are genuinely just advocating for uh, horrifying uh, atrocities and war crimes, right, right before your very eyes, uh, when you're faced with people who are trying to do this kind of liberal posturing of like, yeah, I'm so brave to acknowledge that bad things are bad, actually. And, and then wanting that, you know, just like, oh, it really hurts your cause, really hurts all of you goddamn people who think you care about something if you're not willing to say it's bad things when people do bad things you know but the bad things bad not willing to admit that i mean it fucking hurts the cause right you know i'm just saying and okay well well we're preparing everybody uh, for uh, the safe space necessary i guess that you all want the, the cozy nice safe space where people acknowledge bad things are bad uh yes okay Bad things are bad. I agree. It's bad Bad when bad things happen. And then prefer if, if bad things didn't happen. Agree with you. And now, can we please talk about the hundreds of thousands of forcibly starved children that's happening literally right now and is only being aided and abetted by the military power of the United States? Had it not been for that, uh, maybe we could have uh, saved some kids' lives. Can we talk about that now? Now that I've said the bad thing's bad. Because that's, that's bad, too. That's also really bad, and it's a bad thing happening on a very large scale right now. People that are at least a little bit extreme. Well, Intifada simply just means revolution, and I'm an American, and in 1776, violent, violent we did revolution. one of those, and it was pretty fucking good. Yeah. What do you think? The American, okay. do you we think the American bombed, revolution was a ticket party? We also bombed Hiroshima. We also don't, bombed don't, Hiroshima. Don't, don't, yeah, I know, and that was also... <laughs> Skip to some of the meat, because again, I've, I was like, I've, I've already watched this whole thing in its entirety yesterday. I, I, I so wish I there was an easier in, way to... In the right to protest. To be able... To, to attack the centrists, you know? I don't, I don't feel we go after the centrists enough. The enlightened centrists, especially. That's why it was so satisfying. Yes, I, I know it's uh, low-hanging fruit to make fun of the British for being British, all right? And the same thing for people who make fun of me, simply for being Canadian. And fair dues, you should be mocking and making fun of Canada. It's not a real country. It's it's fake. Um, but uh, ultimately, uh, you know, it, it's at, at this point, it, it, I'm getting so fucking sick uh, of the concept that, like, hey, by the way, it, you really should, uh, if you're going to talk about this, condemn Hamas. I mean, if you're not willing to do that, it hurts your cause. It just really, do you have any moral authority to talk about anything if you're not willing to condemn Hamas? Well, to accurately say what a terror group is. They low-key are, though? Yeah, no, I, and I know. I, I think everybody agrees, right? Everybody agrees that Hamas is pretty much a terror group. Like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, these are all terror groups, right? But I'm Israel. talking about like it being against the law to support it. That that worries me. And I think that my concern is very valid. Remember the 2016 election? The 2020 election? Uh, this is legit. It, it, it's it, very easily that that could happen. Rising. Where's the line for you with these? I agree. I think we have to condemn what Hamas did, and I don't think the words that have been used yeah. so far have been strong enough. I mean, it was the worst thing we've seen in He's a very right. long time. It was disgusting. 
<laughs> I need an enlightened centrism button, you know, just just so I can do it. And then it's like, oh. <laughs> and again, yeah, uh, not not very controversial. Pretty safe thing. Pretty safe take to be like, hey, by the way, uh, kidnapping or killing civilians is bad. Yes. Yes, we all agree. We all agree. So uh, right now, civilians are, are being killed. Children are being killed. Children are being forcibly starved. That, that's been happening. It's been happening before October 7th, and it's been happening after October 7th. Hey, it's been happening in parts where uh, Hamas is not in power at all. The West Bank? Yeah, yeah. so Hamas isn't in power there. Uh, still, kids getting killed, kids getting assassinated. No, no, no justice. No, no, no due process. Just, just again, the, the slaughter of children. This is something we should we should talk about. It's not treated like an October seventh, though, right? It's not treated like a, a horrifying reality or event. It doesn't matter what happens. It can be like, hey, by the way, so mass mass graves were just uh, were just discovered. Did, you know, we're we're talking hundreds of bodies found, uh, zap strap tied, uh, that that kind of stuff. The, you know, the the horrifying reality of, of them uh, being potentially summarily executed and or tortured. That, that that that's a that's the reality of the world that that we're living in but uh but yes we we should we should first and foremost talk about how this was again one of the worst things that's ever occurred and uh he's right writing appalling awful yep, for everyone true. involved i also have a lot of sympathy if not i can't think of a bigger word for the people of gaza it's awful mm -hmm. and i will agree with you i do want a free palestine and i also want a free and successful Israel, but I don't want innocent people murdered. So yeah, you can't go to a protest and start shouting about support for Hamas. Isn't, That's isn't insane. It, isn't it ironic that something like this has become a haven for like the mentally unwell? You're talking about something as serious as a conflict in, in Israel and Gaza. And for some reason, you have really uneducated people that are clearly, should, eight, like 20 years ago, would have been in an asylum, supporting this openly, not... Yep. <laughs> Fucking yep. That's a there like there can be in all of the student protests uh, a random shot or footage of someone being like, uh, "Yeah, Hamas was right. Actually, I support Hamas. I je suis Hamas." Uh, and, and then that story obviously gets run with, uh, as in, hey, this is what the totality of all the protest movements are actually asking or talking about. They're, they're, they're supporting Hamas. Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't students who may be at this point, considering they've all been labeled as Hamas, uh, and uh, that word has almost lost all meaning whatsoever uh, in their own minds, think and or say things like that. I'm not trying to take that away. But the protests have been very clear uh, about what their demands are. They want the universities that they are attending to divest uh, from the military industry complex uh, to no longer support the uh, war effort uh, the ethnic cleansing and genocide of Palestinians that that's what their demands are they're, they're not saying that they are Hamas fighters that they want to be recruited by Hamas that they want to join Hamas none of that shit fact <laughs> just so painful and anybody that doesn't believe that hasn't been on the receiving end of it the people that believe that it's okay to act that way are people who are either acting that way at the at the current time or have never been a victim to it uh the truth is that no it's not okay emotions oh, really, aren't like a uh, the same thing and that it's is not a pardon people to you know not be murdered or slain in the streets right i mean look hassan uh, but, hang on I, uh, Emily, uh, oh, oh, please, oh, oh, i'll oh. come to you let me just ask hassan when when you and emily go at each other like you just did Nobody wins. I mean, no one can really understand a word you're saying because you're, you're shouting over each other. Yeah. You end up just calling each other terrorists. There's no, there's no. No, but like it's like what I said. Like I feel like they feel like they have to do that because of the way that social media portrays a respectable debate. They'll just wait for the person that they don't like to not talk and then clip that part and be like, "Wow, I knew." This started by, uh, at the very beginning, obviously after Hassan pretty much like <laughs> completely and ruthlessly mocked Pierce Morgan without even Pierce Morgan recognizing it. Yeah, I blame the delay, by the way. As soon as it like it cut to Hassan, then he was like, you were trying to have a serious interview with, with crackhead Barney? <laughs> Wait, what? 
<laughs> was that, oh, is that what you were going for there? Oh, yeah, no, she 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 ruthlessly smoked you. <laughs> that's 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 you getting got, uh, Pierce. So that's that's what happened. But then afterwards, uh, Hassan starts talking about things related to the actual, you know, uh, uh, facts on the ground. Let's talk about that. Uh, not speaking directly about any of the uh, other panelists. Not being like, I would like to say that you, you, madam, you are shit. I, I, I hate you. And now I will scream and yell about that for a little while. Uh, no, it was like, hey, I'm going to talk about this. And immediately was accused of hating Jewish people, uh, of supporting terrorism, uh, of being uh, someone who uh, is completely fine uh, with the uh, kidnapping or slaughtering of uh, Jewish people. Like, immediately, that, that's how the whole thing ramped up. And I know for the enlightened centrists of the world aka you know asman uh that uh, you watch this and then you're like well i mean these two are the two extremes obviously this person is a far left extremist this person's a far right extremist but you know the centrist position the enlightened one and, and the one that pierce himself has i mean that's where we all have to be essentially right we've got a it's complicated it's complicated israel has a right to defend itself october 7th was really bad Hamas is a terrorist organization. And I think once we've settled those, you know, a few times over, then, and only then, can we start to have an actual discussion with nuance, with nuance uh, on what's taking place. And that, that, that's what's necessary. They were stupid, and that's it. Public opinion, yeah. It, it's like they're not doing this. Like, I think both of them know that this, this style of conversation is unproductive and bad. sensible dialogue here there's no constructive conversation yeah i think so. it's just two no, that could be opposed sides i do i think abusing so. each other do you understand that yeah i listen pierce okay this is going to always have this is going to always be a very heated discussion yeah. okay having a conversation about how heated this okay. discussion is is utterly unproductive every single moment that we use on air not talking about Every single, every single uh, university building being desecrated, destroyed. Uh, the fact that well, we're having this conversation on the eve. Of yeah, that's something you don't hear. I, like, it's not brought up a lot by the very people who are like, uh, by the way, university campuses right now, they're taken over by extremists. And then it's like, yeah, well, are you talking about in, in Gaza, where, where of the 12 universities, they've either been completely bombed, completely destroyed, or demolished through controlled demolition? That that's happened thousands of people who have been killed in the gaza strip were students so there has been the mass slaughter of students and the demolition of academic institutions yes all of that has happened by the idf of hundreds of why are we both sizing this why it's 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 just honestly it's it, it i i don't know how people once everything like i understand for people who don't know or, or people who haven't learned or people who who don't understand and they've only been listening to talking points for fucking decades maybe their entire lives and it's the first time someone's actually said H have you looked at the numbers by the way have, have you ever tried to because for the most part like yeah uh, hamas does launch rockets at israel and and israel usually shoots them out of the sky uh, with, with this technology provided to them by the United States, the Iron Dome. It's very sophisticated. Yeah, it, it is capable of uh, giving them a very high quality of life within those borders where, where otherwise they would be most likely hit by some of these attacks. Uh, yeah. On the other end, there's complete and utter devastation right now. Yeah. Uh, like, if you look at the footage of it, there's, <laughs> there's parts of the Gaza Strip where there's literally nothing left. I, I don't really give a fuck about what Palestine's problems are or Israel's problems are, but if somebody is blocking the road, I do care. Fucking epic, bro. <laughs> I don't give two fucks. I don't care. I don't care what anyone's doing. I care, all right, if the roads are blocked. Because cars gotta drive in lines buses got a bus yeah that's what this comes down to i don't give two fucks about the rest of it i don't know uh, you probably make i'm guessing tens of millions of dollars a year so that's probably putting you in a pretty high tax bracket you're probably still having to pay quite a bit in taxes more than the average person uh so uh you know uh does that not at all concern you if you spend say a hundred thousand dollars in taxes whether or not that money is going towards 
<sighs> people getting murdered, starved, bombed in other countries, or does it just fuck it? Something's happening somewhere. It's it's whether well then fuck. Shouldn't you be complaining twenty four seven on your live stream about fundraising money for roads and infrastructure in the good old US of A? That's what you should be doing, Asmin Gold. Like every single day, it's like welcome back. I know normally you tune in and I'm gonna be talking about World of Warcraft and we do that thing, but hey, I care so much about roads and traffic. That's what's really important to me. So hey, I really want to rebuild America's roads and infrastructure. I'm gonna bring attention to this issue and I'm gonna use my massive platform 24-7 to talk to you about fucking roads and how much I love when cars go down the line. That's my thing. I love the line. I love the cars and the buses. Hey, we could do this. Let's raise all this money and get the roads back on. That's what I care about. That's that's deep inside me. And I will tell you also that if they are blocking the road and I'm trying to get through the road, I will reflexively be against them. Like, what are you for? Okay, let's vote against it. Because people don't have... I mean, he's a single issue voter. He, he does make it very, very easy. Clear and concise. Hey, it really comes down to one thing and one thing alone. Are you blocking roads? Yeah. Then if you are, well, then, hey, I hate whatever you're about, you know? You, you could be like, I, I want to end fascism. <laughs> and then I'm like, I, unfortunately, at that moment in time, I become a fascist. It just, it just, it happens, you know, like a switch. You're like, hey, I, I hate the Nazis. Oh no, that's too bad. Yeah, just really wish you weren't blocking the road because now we gotta, <laughs> ooh, this is awkward. But yeah, I mean, yes. I do have the one rule, you know, I'm like right. Batman. I don't think that they do. And the law agrees with me. And I think most normal people agree with me. I get that the issues are important, but this is, again, the problem that I think people have is that they think that because they are so outraged about the way something is happening in the world, that they have the moral mandate to break the law and to hurt other people that really aren't even involved with it. Like, I think if you genuinely just don't give a fuck and you're just like, I don't care. I, I do not have issues. I, <laughs> except for one, I do have one issue. I feel very strongly about, and that's don't block my fucking commute. That's it. That's it. I'm a single issue voter. And I just want to make sure that anyone who's blocking my commute, I have the exact opposite beliefs of whatever they have. So that's, that's what I care. But Hey, I mean, you do care about something. So even if you don't care about what people are doing overseas, but you're, you're really, really worried about this, like, does it not occur to you for a second that some people have this disconnect or they feel frustrated or they feel helpless? It's not just only that everyone does everything to virtue signal, like all the time. Like there are people who genuinely like they get moved to tears. They get moved to anger. They, they get moved to frustration or hatred or all that kind of stuff. Mass alienation. Yeah, it's a real thing. Depression, anxiety, the world being uh, already difficult enough. You know, you got to make it through the day. You got your own shit to deal with. Your job sucks. You might not like this. You're getting broken up with. Whatever it is, life can be really hard. In addition to that, it's like, oh, you know what? It's nice to have some me time where I can relax and have a little fun on social media and then you go on the social media and it's just like kids bodies exploding and torture and murder and it's all happening on your taxpayer and you don't have a lot of money and you're having trouble like meeting your own bills or making your own payments and then it's like oh yeah it's, it's that time it's tax season we got to pay for the thing you're seeing on your phone we got to buy that yeah that that horrifying experience and so yeah you might feel very frustrated and helpless and then look at the polls and be like well the the vast majority of americans don't want this why are we still doing this why are we still supporting this joe biden did say like a couple of months ago while he was having ice cream with seth myers that apparently a ceasefire was on the way but that never happened wonder where that went you might want to go online and find whatever the local demonstration or direct action is of your choosing and go do that and not want to get a couple more likes on social media or extra points on the gram, you know, or some some Reddit karma or whatever it is you do online. You might just want to might just want to feel like you are in some way helping rather than being in some way part of the problem. This is an extremely toxic mindset. And I think that it's been going on now for like almost 10 years. Graves being unearthed right now in, in uh, many different parts of Gaza around hospitals that Israel had laid siege to is disgusting. I agree. I came on here 
as I have done last time as well, and as I will probably do in the future as well, with one simple goal in mind, which is... Somebody says if it's not, uh, uh, if it's not uh, disruptive, it's ignored. If, if it is disruptive, it's also bad. Like, just because somebody is giving you attention doesn't mean that you're right. I understand that you think that you have the right to do that, but... So, I'm sorry, what, is Asmund Gold against, like, any civil rights movements that have ever taken place? Like, any protests? Like, as long as you're doing it within the confines of the law, but if you've broken the law, even slightly, you even flirted with it, you know, just like a little crumb, a little crumb of that shit, well then, yeah, obviously, it, at that point, no, it, it, it's, uh, you're ruining your cause. What if everybody else disagrees with you? What gives you the unique moral authority to take to break the law because of what you believe in? What I mean, again, everyone's path is going to be different. There's probably a lot of little uh, instances in your own life that you can point to where you're like, oh, yeah, that uh, really sent me down this uh, pathway. And then I wanted to learn more about that. And then I started researching this. And then, you know, I came to terms with this. And then I read the theory or whatever it is. Um, and for some people, you know, when it came to the Vietnam War, it was seeing the My Lai Massacre. It was seeing hundreds of civilians just get uh, slaughtered by American soldiers for them to be like, well, that's fucked. And I don't want to support that. And and the very idea of people being drafted into this war to commit atrocities like that. No, no, I refuse. I, I'm, I don't want to participate in America. I don't want to play America anymore. I'm deeply, deeply upset by this. I, it does not compute. That's where I'm not compatible with this idea. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to protest. I'm not going to go uh, join the draft. Uh, I'm going to risk getting arrested. I'm going to do some civil disobedience because I disagree fundamentally at my core. I can't do it. I cannot. I, I can't can't play America right now. So I'm sorry. And then what? It's like, well, you did break the rules though didn't you you do belong in jail for the rest of your life if you if you break the rules what gives you the right to do that well you don't have that right so don't be so and personally i think that's a belief for wankers uh yeah i don't i don't have to watch the entire thing again but yeah i was i i assumed that like you, this is going to be the enlightened centrist take to back up the enlightened centrist takes that you were seeing on, on the special right uh and uh I, i'll let the uh, i'll let us on uh have uh i'll let him have the last word instead of asmongold i mean it was the worst thing we've seen in a very long time it was disgusting appalling awful for everyone involved i also have a lot of sympathy if not i can't think of a bigger word for the people of gaza it's awful and i will agree with you i do want a free palestine listen to listen to what i'm saying and you will understand perhaps what i'm trying That's to imply very patronizing here. Uh utilizing the hostages yeah, I am being patronizing. I don't know who the fuck you are, and you're over here chirping, chirping all the way from fucking London about Palestine and doing a both sides are fucking fine type bullshit. Where uh, you're talking about how you want to fucking free Palestine, but also simultaneously, you know, both sides got a lot, a, a lot going on. Shut the fuck up. You don't know anything. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We first want to give a shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. This program is produced thanks to the generous support of our Patreon supporters. Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hegbar Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quite 185, Richard Bomey, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, and Words Greenwood, as well as every other person you see on the screen right now, this show would not be possible without them. And if you want to join these wonderful people who make this entire program possible, simply go to patreon.com slash the service and you can unlock uncensored and bonus episodes and, you know, help us exist.